Hi everybody, you are very warmly welcome to our Fellowship Information and Application Support webinar. Um, you're joined by myself and um, Ali Biella, who, or Biella, sorry, Italian, not Spanish, I always get the two L's wrong, um, who is our Fellowship Officer at the Charter College. Um, really delighted that you're here to join, uh, join us this evening. Um, you might be joining us live or you might be looking at this a year later um, as we plan on putting this up on YouTube. Um, no matter what or where or um, how you're looking at this, you're very welcome. Um, this today we are going to give, just give you an introduction both to ourselves, the college, and um, go through the benefits of becoming a fellow. We have two brilliant guest speakers who are fellows, um, and we'll give you a bit of an insight. And um, we're hoping then to um, let them go off because they've been in school all day, um, and talk you through the process, the application form, and just an opportunity for questions. Um, so, without further ado, we'll get going. So, what is fellowship? Um, and uh, Ali, please feel free to interject uh, any time at all. Um, but I guess for some history um, and for some kind of context, um, every Royal College and Chartered Body has fellows. Um, and when the Chartered College started off, we're still in our infancy, uh, three years old, um, we knew that we had to have a highest grade of membership uh, called fellowship. Um, and it's actually stated in the Royal Charter as well that this is one of the grades. Um, and we very much wanted it to be to recognise teachers um, for their commitment and um, significant contribution to the teaching profession. Um, it is the highest level that we have and there is a um, eligibility criteria that you must have a minimum of 10 years experience as a teacher. Um, and actually this applies to those who um, might work in schools as well in terms of a as a school leader. Um, we're very, very strict on this. Um, we actually ask um, applicants to um, self-declare that they do have this um, experience just to make sure that you meet the eligibility criteria. Um, you also must be peer nominated by somebody who also has 10 years experience as a teacher um, or though working in a school as a school leader. Um, we very much um, recognise that it's um, an accolade held by some of the most committed and um, um, kind of senior teachers across the country. Um, there's also um, a number of fellows who are very high status in the sector as well. Um, so we have some dames and sirs who have joined us, but um, nevertheless, um, it's obviously those who are teaching and are uh, have been te teaching for that amount of time that is so important to us. Um, I just really want you to kind of um, have that mark of recognition um, and just a very much uh, as a professional body recognising those teachers who have um, made such a contribution to the profession. Um, the eligibility criteria um, is um, as so, so um, the, you have to be a member or an affiliate of the Charter College or you must be eligible to be. Um, you obviously again just that 10 years teaching experience, um, it actually is in the 0 to 19 context, so an early years primary, secondary or FE and obviously that's significant contribution to the teaching profession. Um, we find that teachers are quite, uh, what's the word, shy in terms of saying that they have made a significant contribution to the teaching profession. Um, I'm sure if I asked you about your year sevens or your year twos um, to talk about their contribution or their work or their progress, um, you'd be very, um, talk about it for days and days, but um, we very much want you to um, celebrate your own achievements. Um, I'll hand over to Ali now, if that's okay. Yes, thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm just in the next few slides, I'm going to just uh, let you know about the benefits of uh, being a fellow and what happened after you become a fellow. So uh, this slide is what, is what is included in your fellowship. So events, so we are going to invite you to uh, annual fellowship events. Of course, now due to COVID-19, we have uh, pivoted our uh, events onto online events such as webinars, seminars and focus groups. After you're being uh, accepted as a fellow, you can start using the post-nominal FCCT, which stands for Fellow of the Charter College of Teaching, and you will be receiving a letter from our Dame Madison Pico, the CEO of the college, and together with uh, the certificate. Um, we'll give you a special discount of 55% uh, uh, on their uh, membership, which is quite popular amongst our members. And invitations also to fellows only roundtables and APPG, the um, 
small party parliamentary group. The last one uh, w took place, uh, I believe, on the 21st of September, and it was, of course, online, but we will let you know when the next one will take place. And, of course, our network, so the college um, have um, around 26 networks around across the country. And thanks to our fellowship directory, which we will show you later on in this presentation, you can search for fellows and filter them uh, with the region. Um, so you can connect to other fellows ac across the country and check fellowship events around your area. And for the next slide is uh, what happened once you've been accepted um, as a fellow. So if you are not a member, you will receiving a, an email with a, an invitation to uh, set up an account, a fellowship account. And there's a, a fee that you can uh, choose between the annual fee of 85 pounds, or you can opt for the monthly, monthly fee, which is seven pound, around seven pound or nine per month. If you're an existing member, the uh, email that we will send you, it will be the same. You just need to confirm your payment uh, details and uh, this, the system will adjust the fee accordingly. So for example, if you pay, just pay 45 pounds to renew your membership, uh, the system will uh, charge you only 40 pounds for the rest of the year. And if you like to switch to monthly payments, you can do so, of course. Um, the, uh, we just let you give you a sort of a refunds for the uh, annual fee that you just paid and start uh, on the next one, starting the uh, monthly uh, fee. Um, also, another important thing, if you, are, if you know that your school or your academy has set up a group account for your school and you're part of this group, please let us know because we can arrange your fellowship fee to be paid by the school. And uh, now I would like to introduce our first guest, uh, which is Wendy Perman, is one of the, our fellows. So I would like Wendy to go first, and uh, if you would like, please to introduce yourself and tell a bit more about your experience of being a fellow of the college. Wow, how long have you got? Um, so hello everybody, I'm Wendy. I am a science teacher and head of science at a school in Northamptonshire. I was um, involved way back in um, 2016 in the founding, we were one of seven teachers who were recruited on um, voluntarily to help sort of found and think about the Charter College and what we wanted it to be before it launched publicly. Um, yeah, my, I've, I've, I had to put something together and that was me. It's so true what Joe was saying, like we really don't like blowing our own trumpet, but the things that I have done before and that my passion has been to try to work with the underrepresented groups and um, to try and get more students into STEM careers, whether they study physics, chemistry or biology, um, created STEM fellowships uh, and also worked with the Charter College. I'm not quite sure how much I need to go into this alley, whether or not you just move on a little bit. I'm not sure. I'll take guidance from you. Um, no, can, uh, I, yeah, I, 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 do you want me to ask go through the questions that we've got if that's okay that's really yeah yeah of course um so i guess originally what made you get involved with the charge college because i remember the ad coming out i think it was in yeah. schools week and it was looking for teachers and it was very specific that they wanted practicing teachers to join right. the council thank you that helps me to kind of think of things now for me and forgive me it's going to sound again like i'm blowing my own trumpet but i've got to go back to where i come from as to where i start why i started this and there were three things I think that helped me to put my name down as a teacher, just a normal teacher at the time. Um, I don't, I was head of science at the time. I've, I've recently been recruited head of science. Um, and the three things were that I had a previous career in chemistry in a lab and we were used to working in a professional capacity, constantly improving our skills and professional development. That was the first thing. Second thing is my parents um, are from the Caribbean and they're from the Windrush generation and it was very much as I was growing up I was born in Hackney that we talked about part of the community bringing everyone together so being part of the community you went on your own no matter which Caribbean island you came from you worked together to make it better for everybody and the third thing which is a personal thing for me was my husband and I were lucky enough to have four birth children um, and at the time when just before I applied I saw a lot of adverts that went out to say you know, there are young people who need adoptive parents and particularly black and multi, you know, um, children, particularly Caribbean children that really find it hard to find a family. 
so we decided that we were going to start we were going to go through the process of adoption and we adopted our fifth child so those three things really gives the background as to why I would apply to become a um, child's college, why I was one of the seven to apply and was successful to get onto the membership. It was this sense of we are building a community together. We are one voice. We are obviously our context is different and it's going to be a difficult situation that you have to work together to bring together everybody's ideas. But the main thing is that your ideologies are your reasons why. They're the things that help you to decide this is our professional body the same as i was in when i worked in the lab this is our professional body it's something that you have to do as part of your own professional development and something that you believe that you want to do as part of making everybody your community's life better so that's one of the reasons why i put my hand up and said yes i'm really happy to be involved in this i was incredibly lucky to be chosen i feel um, to be part of it and it was really just the beginning of many many conversations about mm. teaching and about our reasons why and so on because i remember wendy when you when you joined the council we had no members <laughs> um, no. and now we've got over forty thousand. so um i guess how was it being a founding member of the council wow the, the the meetings we had were amazing so we started off with probably i think it was about 12 people around the table all of us were in education, bar one or two who were, but we needed expertise. So we had like a financial advisor and we had even somebody from the Royal College of Surgeons there that was helping us to think about what we wanted to do and who we wanted to be. But all of us were there saying, we want every teacher to be involved in this as it is our college. So we had teachers, we had head teachers and we were sitting together and we were trying to say, how can we get people on board with this? Um, and our weekly, oh, sorry, our monthly meetings that we had were really about how do we say what our mission is? How do we put our vision out there? We're idealistic, but how do we physically do this? And Joe, you're so right. I remember when we didn't even have staff who we paid before you and Alison started going around the country to sort of recruit people. It really was like, you know, this is grassroots here. What can we do? We, it was purely down to the fact that we wanted something, that we wanted to build something for teachers, and we wanted to be a professional body where we could improve our skills, we could share our um, experience, and in fact, we can influence policy. So our voice becomes bigger, becomes louder than more of us that there are, and therefore we can help to influence policy. So um, yeah, when we launched it, it was amazing. It was so good. I was so excited when we launched it. And yet we've just gone from strength to strength. Like you say, Joe, it's just so many members now. I'm really, really proud. Yeah, no, definitely. And um, we're financially independent of the DFE now. Yeah, just huge, huge achievements. Thanks to people like you. Um, I guess, have you got any advice that um, you would give to anybody who wants to get involved with either standing for council or different ways oh, of goodness. Um, advocating for the college? Yeah, stand for the council, for sure. It's given me so much confidence. It's helped me to respectfully challenge the status quo, whether it's in school or in the community. It, it helps me once again to reaffirm my whys. It really does. It gives you that feeling of that sense of, of um, ownership of your own professionalism. So definitely stand for the, for the council if you can. And having more teachers in the council is a fantastic thing to happen in the committee, fantastic thing to do. Um, it's opened so many doors for me as well. I'm not one really for um, wanting to self-promote, but it started a conversation in my department, in my school, in my community. Um, I'm now a trustee of my local um, primary trust because of it, because of the skills that I learned while I was on the committee. There are so many benefits to it. And it just makes you, it raises your professional game. It makes you say, when you've got FF, FCCT against your name, you are representing yourself, which is everything, my background and all the shoulders that I'm standing on. But also I'm saying, I believe that we can build this community. I believe that we can build our college with each other and I don't think it's something that we can do on our own I really think that our, each of our voices will help to build something um, and eventually hopefully that other people will relinquish control over what happens to us in our professional body and trust us that we know what we're talking about and we know what we're doing so to relinquish the control back over to us so that we are in control more of our um, professional body. Mm. 
I love that when it's um, like Dame Allison, who's our chief executive, for those who don't know, um, always says that it's given teachers the professional trust and autonomy that's been lost over the last de few decades. Um, my final question to you is, looking forward to the future, what do you think being a fellow can do for the profession as a whole? And you can link that into what the college can do as well, if you like. Well, uh, I think, do you know what? It's something that I would love more fellows to be out there because whenever I see FCCT against somebody's name, I automatically know the process that they've gone through. First of all, to put themselves forward or for someone to recognize the work that they've been doing in their community. So that in itself, you're raising the standard there already. And you're saying in your community, in your school community, you're saying, you know, in teaching in general, you're saying, we have created this title that recognizes all of our hard work that we've gone into the community, that's the first thing. I'd love for more people to be involved in the college. So FCCTs, if we are the ones that can then be the advocates to say, for our profession and to say, look, this, our voice is strong enough and trustworthy enough to be listened to so that policy makers will, will, you know, will use us as advisors and that they will use us to help whatever the future holds for teaching. Um, and hopefully it will help to build. It can only work, however, if we have more and more teachers, people who are in the profession who can actually give um, salient and relevant advice as things will change throughout the years. Mm -hmm. I, hope that Definitely. The I love that. I loved your tagline, um, raising your professional game. We might have to steal that. <laughs> um, Wendy, thank you so much. Um, obviously, you're very welcome to hang around, but I appreciate you've got five children and probably less than <laughs> well. So feel free to drop off. Uh, but thank you so, so much. It was nice to see you again oh, as well. Um, and Stephen. Hi. Could you introduce yourself if that's okay? Sure. Uh, so I'm Stephen Berryman. I am Director of Arts and Culture through a multi academy trust in South London. Uh, I've been teaching now for about 18 years, mostly music teaching uh, in about, I'm in my fifth school now, fifth, sixth school. Uh, and I've been involved in the college, I think probably since it post Wendy's work of making it happen. I joined when it was formally launched uh, fairly early on, I think. I must have been one of the first 100 members, I think. Uh, and then again, when fellowship appeared, I, I probably was in the, I don't know, first 10, I imagine, I was quite keen to apply. So yeah, I've been involved probably yeah from the beginning and I'm a really positive advocate of it actually and I, so much of what Wendy's just said I think it's been my experience as well I think. And don't, for, don't forget to say you're a charter teacher as well yeah charter teacher that's another you know be involved in the pilot of that again so I think for me it's the, the college particularly has been a real rejuvenation of teaching I think because I suppose you get a lot of input at the beginning don't you uh, you know in terms of training but I think as you the longer you're in a profession uh, if you don't climb that leadership ladder and you're in the classroom in a way that the kind of opportunity to grow and develop becomes fewer and far between. So I think actually for college, for me, has offered that uh, professional development and that trajectory for my development as a classroom teacher that didn't exist before. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, I guess I'm going to ask you somewhat similar, but also different questions to Wendy. But um, can you tell us a bit about the application process? How was it? Um, I guess, yeah, how did you find it overall? Yeah, sure. So it was an uh, online application process, had to complete a uh, written application form. Um, I think it's quite good, actually. The questions, uh, they're demanding sufficiently that you have to think about what impact have you had as a teacher? Certainly uh, in, a, in a way beyond, as you were saying earlier, in terms of year seven, in a way the impact you've had beyond your own classroom, the impact you've had with your colleagues, the impact you've had in your school. And I think that was quite good to think about. And actually, you don't get asked these kind of questions in a normal appraisal. So anyway, you know, I had to think about it, I had to ask colleagues for advice, but it was really, really good to have those prompts to reflect. And I really like the fact that these the application is very much connected to these professional principles of what it is to be a fellow. So I like that. You felt you had to prove yourself. Um, so I know I enjoyed the process. And I say, yeah, I think my advice is make sure you allow enough time to do it well. Um, because it's one of those things that, you know, don't leave it till 9pm on a, on a Friday evening, but actually do it well, because it's worth, it's worth doing it well. It's worth spending the time to reflect on your achievements um, and you want to, you know, get it right and fingers crossed be successful. Yeah, no, we often get frantic phone calls from um, people saying, can I do it in 45 minutes? Like, oh, I really don't think you, I wouldn't advise that. <laughs> um, but we always get feedback, actually, that um, it's a really good chance for senior leaders and teachers to reflect 
on um, their experiences. Yeah. Um, so Stephen, obviously, um, as such a keen advocate, um, you've been to many, many round tables and different events. Um, can you do any kind of stand out or any, any in particular um, to have kind of opportunities that have a, being a fellow have allowed you to attend um, that have, I don't know, made an impact on you? Yeah, I think lots of them actually, but one that stands out for me was probably the first time there was a round table at the DFE and I think it was on teacher recruitment. It might have been on teacher professional development. There's been so many. But I think what stood out for me was the fact, gosh, number one, I'm in the DFE. <laughs> I was quite surprised. Uh, and number two, you think the people you're with around this round table are drawn from all over the country. You think, gosh, why am I here? Uh, stood next to this, you know, head teacher from, you know, Northampton. No, but that was a shock. But also just the fact that the, the kind of the, the people from a DFE were asking questions and keen to know and you, you, to, you know, to know about your opinion, your insight, your experience, and just to feel valued and someone wanted to listen. And whilst there was some arguments and debate around the table, it was just think, wow, we are here. This is the place that makes a lot of decisions, uh, whether good or bad about the way we do our jobs. And to think that we have this, the opportunity to be in this building, to have this conversation was just remarkable. And I, I was left beaming. And another one was just when we had a fellows round table at the D and A with Tristram Hunt. And I think, wow, we are with Tristram Hunt <laughs> around the table talking about arts and cultural education. And again, it's just that feeling of, wow, we are, we're valued, we're respected enough to share this space with these really, really important people. They're interested in what we have to say. They're interested in responding to what we have to say. And you felt that you were part of a, a longer conversation. I think this was not just a one-off. These aren't just random round tables. You felt this was a, a really, really important event for the organizers, you know, for Tristan Hunt, that he's gonna take something away, something's gonna happen based on our conversation. So it, it felt really good to be able to be involved. And it, you know, as Wendy said earlier, you feel really lucky to have the opportunity to be there and share your insight and hear from other people. I think one of the benefits of uh, the pandemic is that a lot of our events now are online, uh, whereas previously um, it was obviously you have to either come to London or we always try to make them regional, especially around Manchester. But obviously we often had the House of Lords event. We had it annually um, and just it was a big trip, I think, for a lot of teachers. Um, and obviously we're not able to have that this year, but in future years. So we've actually, um, for example, recently we had a UNESCO round table and that was really interesting. Um, and we also um, produced a report um, around the impact of COVID-19 on education. And we did some interviews with fellows asking them their opinion. And then we then presented it to government It actually went straight to number 10. So just the fact that teachers really inputted into that um, and fellows and school leaders was so, so important to us. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, and my last question, um, Stephen, for you is, um, what do you think the future of teaching looks like um, uh, for the profession as a whole in, with the kind of input of fellows? I think it's very much what Wendy was saying, actually, that the more of us who go through this grade of membership, the more of a difference we can begin to make, I think. And actually, I think building on these round tables and build, making this a, a regular conduit, as Wendy was saying, you know, between us and policy, and very much we, we should be feeding into it. And I suppose actually I feel, and I know there's, you know, there's lots of talk about the fact, should there be fellows? Should there be this, this higher grade of membership? And I sense, I feel there should, because I think some of us have been teaching for a while and we deserve that recognition. We've really committed our lives to this job. And I think to be recognized for that uh, is fantastic. And I know we get recognition within our own schools, uh, but to be recognized beyond your school uh, I think it's really, really important. So I hope that continues. I hope it also continues that this, as I said, this regular conduit between you know, us as fellows with a charter college, with policy making. And also I think the college has such a valuable connection with university and research. But I hope as well that fellows can play a role in how that conduit of kind of research and university sector can be developed further. Because I know that you know, what works in a laboratory might not work in a, a year seven on a Thursday morning. But you know, we hope that through this ongoing conversation, what does work becomes more readily shared and more readily critiqued and more readily discussed because we want the best for young people. And I think the fellowship can help make that happen by keeping the conversation going. Mm, yeah, definitely, that's really powerful. Thank you. Um, we'll be seeing many of those words, I'm sure, in our marketing materials. Um, <laughs> you'll, see, you'll see them soon. Um, yeah, and I think for me, um, I always say to fellows, because um, I speak to lots lot of them before they apply, um, 
I'm always really honest, and I say like we're governed by you, um, fellows and members. So very much what you think we should be doing, um, and we have to present our annual plans every year to our council, and they need to sign them off. Um, so it's it's very much um, by the profession for the profession. Um, Stephen and Wendy, I'm very aware that you might want to uh, nip off now. You're very welcome to stay, but we won't. Um, no judgment at all if you want to go and actually relax this evening before you have to teach tomorrow. So um, thank you so so much, um, um, and. We'll go, keep going, Ali, if that's okay. Right. Absolutely. So in terms of the process of the application form, um, you'll see here you can nominate a fellow um, on the main page. Um, if you just go into the Chartered College website and click fellowship, it will then take you to um, a fellowship nomination form. You have to fill out your name and the nomin nominee's name. But this is really important and you have to actually confirm your eligibility to nominate and it's self-declaration. Um, A, that you think they're suitable, but also that you um, have been teaching or working in a school as a school leader for 10 years. It's extremely important um, that you do that. You will then get an email. Um, so the nomination form is done. Um, you'll get an email telling you um, how to apply. Um, you then have to create a free account and it's on an application form software called Submittable. Um, and on this free account, it, what the beauty of it is, is it actually allows you to log in and out um, whenever you like, so your application is saved. I often do have lots of people tell me that they copy and paste the questions over to Word so that they can just um, work, spell check it and things like that. So it's entirely up to you, but you're, um, if you do choose to actually do it in the application software itself, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and then once you hit submit, um, we then look for the reference um, and they are, they need to provide a um, one page or um, a blurb, or, sorry, a statement that they um, advocate for your professional standing. And there's actually some guidance in there as well. So just the referees, so some tips. Um, we always say that uh, the referee should stick to the professional principles. There's a link to it in the application form. Um, and we're really not looking for um, them to write essays on each professional principle and how you've made it um, and how you have demonstrated that rather. Um, so that's what I would say. Um, around one page, um, and it can be a peer who has known you for a significant amount of time um, or a more senior member of staff. If you're a head teacher or a chief executive, what they often do is get their chair of governors to uh, do it for them. Um, or it could be a fellow head teacher or chief executive. It doesn't necessarily need to be a line manager. We actually have an example of a redacted application form. And um, this was one of the application forms that we had. And um, so I'll just go through, this is what it looks like. Um, so you have to obviously take the eligibility criteria and give us your um, personal details and things that you're known at and where your um, work is, your organization. We just ask you your job title and things like that. And if you've got any more um, qualifications, um, again, we'll ask you how many years you've been teaching for or how did you teach? Um, and are you currently a member? The next section is the reference section. So you'll see here exactly what I've gone for. We put in this blurb here so that you can, on the left-hand side, so that you can copy and paste that over um, to send to them in advance. And I would highly recommend that. Um, there's always kind of three outcomes from the application. Either one, your application has been accepted, we've got all your references and the membership committee is satisfied. Number two, we um, haven't had your reference and we need you to submit it to us straight away um, as to not delay your application or third um, you're rejected and you can apply in another cycle um, and again you'll see here that you can add in details of who your reference is. In terms of the cover letter the reason we picked out this cover letter was because they um, actually laid out their application form as per the advice that we give and the first was um, why do I want to join the uh, fellowship as a fellow. Um, and I think this is really important to note because um, your understanding of the college itself, we get a lot of applications um, which actually refer to us as the wrong name um, and that they just don't seem to have a sense of who the, what professional body is and what it can do for the profession. The second is what will I bring to fellowship in its first year and this is something um, actually it's actually changed now to what can I bring to fellowship because it's no longer in its first year but um, I think this is very personal to um, you as an individual and I think I always kind of go back to what you want the college to do we're all ears and um, it's very much um, listening to you so if you have an area of expertise or a kind of a vision for the future of teaching we want to hear it um, and I think obviously growth of the college is huge for us so although we've hit 40,000 members we want a lot more um, and just if you're able to help us in any way um, I would really really recommend it 
I th always think as well, my overall advice with the cover letter is um, this is your chance to really tell the membership committee and those reviewing it um, of your career achievements to date. Really don't be afraid to shout about yourself um, very much. Um, tell us about your achievements. Um, although attainment and data is so important, we're really looking forward to the storytelling of teaching, very much want to know um, how you are, um, and what we think you're proud of, I think, just the stories of teaching um, about the pupils and the learning and um, just the, the difference that you make is really, really important to us. Um, I always say as well, if you have an example that you can't fit into the later essay questions, feel free to put it into the cover letter. It's really, there's kind of no limit. I guess the average is uh, one page to one and a half page. Um, the next are the professional behaviours. There are five in total, and you'll see here in this um, one, he, this uh, candidate has chosen one, three, and four. You have to choose between one or two. Um, if you want to do one and two, that's fine, but you have to choose at least one or two. So this person has done this correctly. They've chosen one, and then they've chosen three and four. Um, you'll see here just the examples. Um, we asked for how you demonstrated your first one, um, and they talk about how they, um, it, it very much a story of and real concrete examples of when they have actually demonstrated it. Um, we um, advocate for the car method of answering questions, so describing the context, actions that you took, and the results. So you'll see here um, in May 2018, um, I've spoken about um, and all these courses, and then the, obviously context of it, um, and very much what they did, and then the results. Um, we also recommend that you use the word I. I think teaching is a fabulously collaborative profession, and people love the word we, but we actually want to know what you did. Um, you'll see here as well, um, for the second uh, behavior that they've chosen to talk about, um, again, they followed the kind of context, actions, and results. They have concrete examples, the year seven um, pupil voice session, for example. Um, where people go wrong in the, the section, the essay questions, is they begin to critically analyze or reflect on um, academic theory. Um, and to be frank, we know all this. Uh, we know that there's different ideologies and different points of view. Um, however, what we're really looking for you is to show uh, really um, concrete examples of when you have demonstrated the professional behavior you're speaking about um, and would really recommend that you really just have that in mind am I actually showing how I've demonstrated this in one to two examples and um, it needs to be no more if you want to include more that's absolutely fine but we recommend more depth over breath I always describe the essay questions as the kind of deep um, kind of deep dive for want of a better expression into how you've um, shown something where the cover letter is more of a broad overview and then the third here as well, um, just talking about different um, things that this person has engaged with um, and how they've, um, it's actually engaging with professional development and research. And actually concrete examples is even dates there that you, you can actually check to see what they've attended um, and actually have the plans as well. Um, Ali, if you want to talk about the fellowship directory, if that's okay. Uh, yes, uh, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, this is a, only a purely a screenshot so of our uh, fellowship directly, I, just to show you how it looks like. And as I said before, if you would like to connect to other fellows um, and maybe discover what uh, are the uh, networks, if there are any events in your area, you can search um, on the directory and you can search by name, surname, and filter, as I said, uh, by region and type um, as a fellowship or a founding fellow. Uh, it's really simple to use and uh, every cycle uh, we try to update uh, for our new fellows. So it will usually it's updated every term, but we are trying to be like a more um, close to the deadline. And then as soon as we have uh, the fellows uh, awarded, then we put it on the fellowship directory. So it will be a, a good idea to check it um, every now and then to see any updates and check on our new fellows in your area. Definitely, I couldn't agree more, Ali. And um, just the idea that if you're going for an interview and put down that you're a fellow and the people who are interviewing actually go and check that you're there um, as well as your fellowship certificate. Um, and in the future, we'd love to develop this um, so that we can have more information about yourselves and that um, you can put, really promote even, we'd, uh, personally, I'd love to have pictures of everyone on there, but that's just me. Um, so just to go through the next um, application cycles, um, the 30th of November is the next deadline. 
the 8th of January after that, and then the 19th of February. You will be told exactly 30 days from that date when, if, whether or not you've been successful. The reason for that month uh, gap is we need to review applications, make sure the membership committee have seen um, applications and also that they ratify the decision. Um, the chair of our membership committee is Amy Tinkler. She is a, a teacher and school leader in um, Nottingham area. So she's absolutely brilliant and is also a founding council member as well. Um, just to tell you what we've got coming up, so um, Oak National Academy are hosting a session for our fellows and um, this is the online school that was set up by the government. In December as well we have Sir David Carter um, doing a fellows lecture um, on his new book which is absolutely brilliant um, and I think just stay tuned, we're really really keen to kind of adapt to the new world. We had lots and lots of brilliant plans to kind of put fellows in the driving seat and um, to kind of lead events um, related to our mission and our theory of change but um, sadly obviously that all had to be put on hold so um, stick with us and um, also we're very willing to hear from other fellows people like Stephen and Wendy um, are very much advising us as, as well as on our uh, council things that we can engage fellows with so join us and um, please if you've got any questions please do ask I'll have a look in the chat box now and um, we really want to celebrate teachers for the absolute as teachers and school leaders importantly about their commitment to the teaching profession um, and don't be shy I guess is my advice so I'll yep and there's our address, email addresses, so that's Ali and mine, um, if you need anything. And yep, just any questions, I'll have a look at the bo chat box. Any questions at all? Give you a couple more minutes. If there's no questions, you're very free to leave. Um, this will be recorded and it will be put up on YouTube um, and we'll make sure that the slides are on our main website as well, just so you can see the um, redacted version of the uh, application form as well. So thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, and yeah, thanks so much. Please stick around if you've got any questions. We'll wait until everybody's gone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and I just want to mention if uh, you have any queries about your fellowship application or a general query, uh, don't hesitate to contact me, myself, uh, the email address as you see, or even to the general one, which is hello at charted.college. If you need also the uh, link for the application form, um, again, please contact me because I can send you straight away and you can start uh, your application as soon as possible. Thanks, Marie. Lovely Irish thanks there. <laughs> Bye everyone, um, and I'll stop sharing. Oh, I've got some questions here. Um, I have an online membership as part of my science journal club. I, if what I take yes, if I remember, yes, you can go ahead and take yes. Um, Rocky. Who can the referee be? Sorry, I missed that part. So um, the referee can be a peer or somebody who's a line manager. So somebody who can advocate for your professional standing. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be your head teacher or if you are a head teacher, um, it could be your chair of governors, um, a peer. So I don't know your role, but um, somebody who can advocate for your professional standing. Actually, if the person to nominate isn't a member, but is eligible, how do they access the nomination form? It's on our website. So charter.college uh, slash join actually, and then go to fellowship and it's there. If you do have 10 years experience, and um, this is from Ellen, um, if you do have 10 years teaching experience but are no longer teaching, can you still apply? And working with schools as a school improvement consultant. Um, Ellen, yes, you can, um, so long as you have had that 10 years experience and can demonstrate that you've made a contribution to the profession. Raki, do they have to know you for a certain um, number of years? Um, no, they don't. They just need to advocate for your professional standing. As far as I know, that's right, Ali, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's correct. Great. Any other questions? Oh, can the referee be, oh God, there's loads coming through. Sorry, there's a bit of a delay, so sorry. Um, if the person to nominate isn't a member, but is eligible, I'll add to that one. Do they need to know if you nominate? Oh, can the referee be somebody outside your school, anonymous attendee? Yes, they can. So the, num the referee doesn't necessarily need to be somebody in your institution. They just need to advocate for your professional standing um, and know you in a professional capacity as well. Great, 10 people left, so we'll just hang around. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
sorry, I missed the answer to number of years. Would you mind saying again? And what you're referring to with that, the number of years that you have to have been teaching for? So I'm, I'm just gonna answer it as if it's both. So for if you're, uh, if you're looking, asking how many um, number of years you need to be a reference, um, they just need to know you in a professional standing. There's not necessarily a um, number of years that they need to know you. If it's for you applying, you need to have at least 10 years um, of working in a school as a teacher or school leader. Great. Um, Oh, number of years the referee knows you. Yeah, no, none necessarily. Sorry, it's a slight delay with the coming through. <laughs> Great, we've got now five left. So, um, oh, just double checking, does the nominee and referee have to be separate? Yes, they can't be the same and we do check. <laughs> ah, thank you, really informative. No problem, Joanna, glad you said that. <laughs> Great. And there's only four left. I think that's actually chart code staff. So we'll end. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.